Hey, welcome back. Another base review. Today, we are looking at the Ibanez BTB1825 NTL. Ah, what is this? My gosh, this is beautiful. So BTB is uh, about one of the series of Ibanez bases that's about 20 years old now, or just maybe just over 20 years. Um, they are uh, meant to be kind of more... Uh, Exotic. Someone can fill me in on what the BTB means. I'm not quite sure. Uh, they have a wide range. I don't know if they make the cheaper range anymore. I did see a used one not too long ago. But uh, again, Ibanez is a little confusing. They have a bunch of different series. Um, so this is uh, the BTB, which is a little bit more of a modern style. It's the their 35 inch scale length. Um, they. Uh, the series all vary. Uh, I have a BTV 800 series six string, which is part of Ivanez's workshop series, which is meant to be a kind of a fancy type base. This here, the 1825, is a premium series. And premium basically is the uh, best, uh, the best Indonesian made, top of the line Ivanez base. There is a Prestige series, which are Japanese made, and those are very, very expensive. These retail probably around uh, between um, 1600 and uh, between 1600 and 2000, uh, this type of series. Now, this particular model, the 1825, is no longer in production, but this doesn't mean it's an old base. All that happens is every, every year, Ibanez just mixes things up. They change most, mostly they just change the woods that uh, the base is made out of and the colors that are offered. Otherwise, the guts and everything is the same. It's a neck, neck through body construction, multiply. This one here happens to have purple heart stringers in it. Uh, I think the uh, newer ones have walnut stringers. Um, this one here has walnut, uh, they have bubinga, I think actually the newer ones. Uh, but it's, uh, this one is, uh, walnut, bovinga, maple, and purple heart. Uh, so this is a heck of a neck. Um, and has ash wings and a walnut top. And there's some other little wood in here that's in kind of making a nice little sandwich. And I'm not sure what it is. It might be my mahogany, maybe, or maybe more for, I don't know, but, uh, it's nice. It's fancy. Like I said, it's retailed around seventeen hundred dollars, I think. Um, but uh, the uh, difference now. Oh, and it has a bound panga panga fretboard. And really much. I mean, the newer model is the eighteen thirty five. Uh, so ten more. No, they went up. Um, and that really, the only difference is instead of the walnut top, it has a bubinga top. So. It's light. It's lighter colored. Walnut tends to be darker than bobinga. Bobinga is a little lighter brown, and it. I don't think it has purple heart stringers in the neck on that one, so the neck is a little bit different. But otherwise, everything else about the base is the same, and the things that are the same are these are Aguilar DCB pickups. The now ubiquitous Ibanez monorail bridge, which is pretty cool. Allows, you know, it separates each string and total uh, independent uh, adjustment as the standard Ibanez three band EQ with an active passive. So you have your master volume, your pickup blend, bass, mid, and a double function uh, uh, control here for treble and tone. So this is your tone control when you're in passive mode. Great. I love that. Hey, everybody, when you make, I, I really like active bases that have passive modes with passive tones. It just gives you a, such a world of options from the tone type standpoint. Um, and what else? So like I said, it's got a 35 inch scale neck with a panga panga uh, fretboard. This one has uh, premium gold hardware. They are Goto. They actually say Goto on them. They're not... Uh, Ibanez copy ones. Uh, I think my workshop has uh, has Ibanez style. They're slightly different. These ones are fancy. They, the the um, 
lot of these types of tuners, they tend to be more um, more full here. These are rounded off shoulders a little bit more, but uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful bass. It's relatively lightweight. I didn't weigh it, but based on, you know, just playing with basses and a lot of the time, I'd say it's probably in the eight pound range, this one. Um, not wearing it on a strap, but I can tell you, uh, BTBs balance very well because of the upper horn here is extended out and comes out right at the 12th fret. Any bass, any instrument really, but any bass especially that has a horn that comes up to the 12th fret is really going to balance pretty well on you. So, uh, so yeah, that is your Ibanez BTB 1825. All right, so once again, I will be going through my Mesa WD-800 subway head. I'm playing through a 215 uh, subway cab. It For me, it's going to sound awesome. I can't explain how awesome this cab sounds. I'll do a video on it when I get a chance, but uh, I won't be able to capture the, uh, the true tone nirvana that comes from this beast. Uh, and you're just going to be hearing the direct signal with no EQ right from the line out. So, first off, let's go with both pickups up in passive mode. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like going run through everything. I'll go quickly as I can. So, uh, again, if you like what you see here, uh, hit that like button, uh, subscribe, check out. I have a whole bunch of videos. I do comparisons. Uh, I throw some live videos up of my bands playing out, but uh, the bulk of the stuff I do are reviews. This space here was lent to me by my good friend Steve Lane. I should probably set up a playlist just a Steve Lane basses. Um, and uh, thanks, Steve. And again, uh, you know, this is a, uh, if you, fabulous boutique style bass, but uh, which I think the BTB stands for. I think it's meant to be boutique bass, but I don't know. Uh, correct me if you know in the comments. Anyways, here we are, both pickups up in passive mode. <laughs> See how that sounds when I do the play when I do my editing, but boy does that sound good here in the room. Bridge pickup all, all the way. Um, <laughs> Very obvious, your typical bridge sound, very th nasally, uh, maybe a little grindy. Wow, the, the bridge really pumping and kicking. I mean, the both together yields a pretty nice tone. Speaking of tone, let's put the tone at halfway, which is uh, probably how you'll end up using it a lot because let's say you're, uh, you're switching back and forth from active to passive, seeing that that's the treble control, you're probably not gonna have the treble control dimed. Uh, Although maybe you're a freak and you will. Um, so let's uh, have that tone it halfway. And so here we go. This is a really nice sounding bass. Okay, bridge. Uh, neck, neck pickup, duh. And now the bridge. All right, 
So, um, yeah, this is a very nice, easy to play bass. I really like it. Uh, the neck feels really smooth underneath. Uh, it's not very wide, not very deep. I mean, I have freakishly big hands, but I can see someone with normal hands probably enjoying this and being able to play this bass pretty well. Um, yeah. Here's the tone all fall away with both pickups. Neck tone all the way off. Bridge tone all the way. Well, I can definitely say, in passive mode, I would. I'm not a fan of the the bridge pickup by itself. I think it'd definitely be nice for adding the tone. Let's go halfway here, tone up all the way. And I'm gonna favor the. Uh, I'm gonna first. I'm gonna do uh, both, and then I'm gonna favor the bridge. So. Okay, favoring the bridge, both pickups. Slightly a little more definition, I think, in the note there. I'm gonna favor the favor the neck. So your mileage may vary, you may feel may different, but uh, so far so good. Pretty uh, pretty decent uh, tone combinations. Okay, now I'm gonna go to active mode, and I forgot to mention this the the standard. Uh, yeah, we heard some buzz there. A little bit of noise with the triple crank. Like I said, you're not going to crank the triple on this in active mode. Uh, there is a three-way selector. Um, usually it's like 250, 450, 700. Uh, sorry for not knowing exactly, but that's a typical uh, Fender. Uh, Fender. That's a typical Ibanez uh, frequency centers. That is what really makes these bases, having that, being able to choose the mid frequency and then uh, cutting or boosting really makes the big difference in that. So... I'm going to show you that right now. Uh, so we're going to have both pickups all the way up. This is with the tone flat. Now I'm going to cut the mids all the way. And this should be the highest setting of the mid. That's nice. Okay, the mid section on the mid, which is here on 400, 450. And now the other setting. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is go through the mids. So, bottom, this is counterintuitive. So I'm going to go through the mids, right? The, it's counterintuitive. All the way down is the highest setting. Middle is middle, obviously, and all the way up is the lowest setting of the mids. So you'll get used to it, I guess, as you play. So what I, one of my favorite things to do is to put it in the highest mid setting and then roll back the mids, because I think it really gives that extra punch. So here we go. So that's around 700 or so uh, hertz. Here we are at 450. And at the low setting. So you can see there, when you cut the lowest mid, it really brings out more of like a that nasally sound, They're almost like you're favoring the bridge pickup without changing the pickups. And same thing with cutting out the highest mid frequencies. And what makes these variable mid frequency uh, preamps so useful is that you can really just dial in that extra tone that you want. So if you're a tweaker, a mid variable mid frequency, either one that sweeps 
the whole frequency range or at least gives you multiple choices. I know like mostly Aguilar's have maybe two choices of uh, frequencies, which is still better than a fixed frequency. That's as far as I'm concerned, you know, any active bass, that's a must have. That's just me. But anyways, that uh, what's a, let's go and have some fun. I'm going to do bridge pickup. Oh gosh, I keep bridge pickup. I'm going to boost the bass up a little and I am going to cut the high and I'll leave the treble center. Cut the high mid and leave the treble center. I'm going to do that with the neck pickup. Excuse me, I have to go check the mortar in my basement bricks. I think I may have dislodged some. Anyways, I could be here all day going through all the different tone things. I just wanted to give a, a quick high level rundown. I've got other videos where I go into more depth into this uh, into this setup. Uh, on my SRS uh, video, which of course I think the sounds horrible on that, but oh well. Um, and my uh, BTB8, uh, 846. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you're looking for a you know, a real high-end looking boutique style bass. I mean, this, this goes for what a uh, top of the line American Fender uh, jazz or P bass goes for. This is so much more than those instruments. Obviously the fancy woods is nice, the attention to detail, the quality is excellent. I mean, 25 years ago, you, you know, you told me uh, you're going to spend around $1,800 for an Indonesian-made bass. I'd be like, wow, inflation got crazy, huh? Uh, but uh, the, the workmanship is top-notch. They're not fooling around. These are these are not, these are mass-produced, but not completely mass-produced. I mean, there there is some uh, limitations. I mean, it's not like the cheapo $200 basses that you can find everywhere. I mean, this is a real nice instrument. I didn't mention zero fret. Uh, you could do a lot worse. You could pay a whole lot more money and still not get a bass that has a lot of these things. Like I said, the Aguilar pickups, they're very flexible. I'm a really fan, big fan of the, uh, the Imanez uh, preamp. Feel free to disagree. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, lightweight. I mean, this, this is a very impressive instrument. Highly recommended if you can afford it. Uh, as I said, the, uh, 1825 is no longer in, but really any of the 18 series and even the 19 series, I think it's the 1905 is the, uh, I'm not quite sure, I think probably again a little bit difference in the woods, but uh, uh, they, different series, they have different pickups. You know, they have Nordstrand's uh, pickups in some, they have Bartolini's in some. Um, I don't know, I think the Bartolini's and the Nordstrand's are... Uh, tweaked to Ibanez specifications, whether or not the Aguilar's are too, I don't know. But, uh, hey, like I said, if you were to order a base like this from a custom builder, which I highly recommend you do, if you can, support local uh, small base builders, it's going to cost you a bit more than this. So if you want something that's really boutique, difference with your smaller base builders, they're going to fine tune it. The, they'll probably have even even higher attention to detail. I've played Federa's, and I can tell you that the finishes on those are are otherworldly. Uh, they still use plastic knobs, which kind of wrecks it. But uh, yeah, the workmanship on a six thousand dollar Federa is un, un, unbelievable. Um, but um, you know, this is a pretty good bargain, I think. So, anyways, again, if you like what you see here, please subscribe to the channel. Check out my other playlist of other bass reviews. My other playlist? My playlist of bass reviews. And maybe I'll have another video pop up here for you. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Do you like the Ibanez uh, BTB series? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, would, you, would, you, would you pay $1,800 for a premium in made in Indonesia bass? Let me know. Feel free to, to, uh, to chime in. But uh, again, like I said, uh, you could do a whole lot worse than these. So uh, again, subscribe. Check out my videos and uh, rock on.
Thank <laughs> you.